Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners regular special meeting, our Zoom, uh, Zoom, excuse me, Zoom virtual meeting for Tuesday, May the 19th, 2020. Uh, I'm going to, again, welcome all of you here. At this time, I want to do a roll call. If you will answer, we want to make sure everybody is able to see and hear. So we will start out with uh, Vice Chair Mowey. Yes, sir. Commissioner Abley. Here. Commissioner Britton. Here. Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Taylor. He was here just a second ago. Uh, let me see. He's waving. Is he muted? Commissioner, you are muted by who? Mr. Taylor, can you hear me now? I've heard. I heard you from the beginning. Okay. Well, you're you're something was wrong with your button. Now we got your voice. Okay. Can everybody hear Commissioner Taylor now? Yes. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. County Manager. Yes, sir. County Clerk. I'm here. All right, Deputy County Manager. Yes, sir. County Attorney. Present. All right, we're all here. If you, while you're sitting there, if you have any uh, mobile devices or anything with you that might create some background noise, if you want at this time, I would ask you to mute those. We're going to move into our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight will be by our friend, Pastor David Bridges, for the First Apostolic Church over there on Drexel Road. And after David finishes, we will do our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our county attorney, J.R. Simpson. So at this time, let me recognize Pastor David Bridges. David? Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Let's all pray together. Lord, we're thankful and praise you today, God, for this day that you've given us for our health and well-being, God, we thank you today. Pray, Lord, that as our county is facing this unprecedented pandemic, God, we pray that you would touch those who are battling this virus. Pray, Lord, that you would put your hand of healing upon them, and Lord, that you would bring them through this, and let it be a testimony unto your power and your mercy. We pray, Lord, for those that have lost their lives to this virus, God, that you would be with the families, that you would lead and guide and direct and comfort them in this time of loss. Lord, your word declares that if we will humble ourselves in your presence, that you would hear and you would heal our land. We're asking, God, that you would do just that. Thank you, Lord, for the work of our commissioners and all that they are doing to better our community and our county. Pray that you would bless this meeting tonight, God, that you would have your hand upon it, that everything that's done and said would be in decency and order. And Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Jr. if you'll just in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you all stand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, under God, indivisible, liberty and liberty and justice for all. Thank you, JR. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Bridges. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right, moving on to item number four is the approval of the agenda. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, you've heard uh, um, Commissioner Abley, and I will do a, a vote roll call again. Vice Chair Mulwee. Aye. Commissioner Britton. Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. And myself, yes. So that will be unanimous with Wayne's motion. Moving on to minutes approval. We have minutes from December the 2nd, pre agenda meeting, December the 17th, a regular meeting, January the 7th, a pre agenda meeting, January the 10th, our special meeting, and January the 15th, a special meeting. So if there's not any changes, or anything, again, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I reviewed them. I found no irregularities, so I make the motion that they be approved. 
All right, everyone heard Commissioner Taylor's motion. All in favor, uh, Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. And myself will be yes, that'll be unanimous, okay, with uh, Commissioner Taylor's motion. Thank you. All right. All right, moving on to item number six is our presentations tonight is the pet of the month, and that will be presented by Caitlin, Caitlin Settlemeyer, our animal services director. Good afternoon, Caitlin. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Okay, so um, we're at a unique point right now. We have no adoptable dogs in our shelter, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so we are going to present one little kitty cat this evening. Her name is Bessie. Um, we call her Bessie because she looks like a little black and white cow. Um, I'm going to let Miss Lindsay talk to her about her because she is a staff favorite of Miss <laughs> Lindsay. So Lindsay's our coordinator and she's going to talk about Bessie. Hey guys, this is Bessie. She is an adorable petite female um, long haired cat. She has the softest purr and she, or fur and she is always purring. <laughs> um, and I just love her. I think she's great. She loves to be held like a baby. Um, and she would make the perfect family member for any of you. <laughs> so that's little Bessie. Um, we also, just because we didn't have any dogs available to share, oh, it won't let me share my screen because Kay's sharing hers. Well, I can unshare. Can you unshare? Yeah. Um, we just wanted to share a few of our um, pets that have been adopted. Let me pull it up. Real quick, um, so we have little Betsy, Betsy here, and her, all her long gore, long hair. Betsy. So we've had quite a few adoptions over the last several months. We wanted to share that with you guys of all of our cats and dogs that are finding their homes. And this is why we have no adoptable dogs here in the shelter. <laughs> So if anybody's interested in adopting or fostering um, for us, our contact information is listed here on this page. And that is all I have. I can answer any questions. All right. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Gentlemen, do y'all have any questions for Caitlin? Any comments? No, oh, great job. Yeah, on behalf of uh, Johnny, I'd like to say great job for all of y'all that we don't have any dogs. That is very encouraging to know that people are out there adopting right now. And hope so. hopefully somebody will pick up Miss Bessie and uh, get her out. So do you have a, a number of cats right now or are we down? Um, we, we are down on our cats. We have um, six adoptable cats in the shelter. Um, we took in about 30 kittens this week who are all in foster homes currently. So um, those guys are pretty young, but they'll be looking for their forever home soon. Fantastic. Well, again, great job. And to the citizens of Burke County, I want to remind you and encourage you that that is our job at the Burke County Animal Services Center is to provide that service of adoption. So please go adopt, adopt, adopt. All right. If there's no other questions, I thank you for that report, Kaylin. All right, moving on, item number two is from TDA, our financial update for the period ending March the 31st, 2020, and that will be presented by Ed Phillips. Brother Ed, you on? Good evening. How's everyone? Wonderful. All right. So, um, as you can see with our balance sheet, we have $296,242 as of uh, March 31st. Um, which is a good balance for us. We're healthy financially. Um, I feel good about our balance and feel good where we are financially this year. We have had some setbacks with occupancy tax collections. As you know, the COVID has impacted travel. There has been short-term rental closures. Those are now open and we're happy about that. Um, it looks like April was the bottom. So um, May occupancy at the hotels has picked back up. I spoke to them today and this past couple of weekends it's picked up and now through the week it is picking back up. So we are happy to hear that and hope that April was the bottom and we're on a slight recovery, which will definitely help us in the, the near future. Um, we do have a campaign that we've been on social media on Facebook called Burke's Treasures. For the last five weeks, every morning at 6.30, there's a post about 
a Burke treasure that is uh, tied to tourism, attractions, or people, or retail. Uh, this morning it was CBS Sports, and it talked about CBS Sports being the largest uh, locally owned sporting goods retailer and all that they offer to visitors and residents. And we'll continue this for the foreseeable future. Um, starting in June, we're gonna have a campaign called Discover Burke's Treasures. And we have actually put together some packages for um, weekends and throughout the week to invite people to come to Burke County in an organized manner with um, Girls Weekend, uh, Couples Getaway, and Adventure Getaways. And we're gonna be actively marketing that in early to mid-June in markets that are close to us, such as Charlotte, Greenville, South Carolina, Winston-Salem, Greensboro, High Point, and the Raleigh market. And we've had uh, good reception so far from the media. We've already booked two appearances to appear in Greenville, South Carolina, and Charlotte to promote this. And we'll be sending out a press release to media on, in early June to promote this as well. We're excited about this. I think people are ready to get out, um, out of the metropolitan areas and come to uh, the mountains and enjoy Burke County. All right, thank you, Ed. Questions or comments for Ed from anyone? Ed, would you um, uh, address, you know, we, we suspended uh, marketing uh, for a brief period of time, and obviously we, we just sat down at the TDA meeting the other day to, to look at the budget and um, just kind of explain what we're doing marketing-wise to be more prudent moving forward. We don't really have anything long-term long -term commitment. So if you could just give a, just a brief summary of what we discussed. Sure. So the first thing we did when um, the COVID hit, we realized there was going to be, you know, a, a major impact on our budget um, and major impact. Let me say this. Uh, March was down almost 60 percent over the previous March. Um, April is probably going to be down. My guess is 80 to 90 percent from the previous April. Like I said, that was the bottom. May's coming back. But we have first thing we did was we went out to folks that we're doing business with and we asked them to help us. And we had publications um, that we advertised with give us free ad space and um, articles that were placed in there. And also our billboards on I-40, Lamar Billboard has done a, a very, very good thing for us to help us with our financial um, issues. And so they gave us a huge discount for a couple of months. And then we've also cut back on everything else that we, we possibly could to preserve our money for what we call recovery marketing. So. We're preserving money now so that when we're free to travel again and people are free to travel, that we have the funds available to market to those, those folks. Um, and so we've cut back quite a bit, um, all travel and promotions until this promotion in June. And we're gonna be using Facebook marketing quite a bit to reach our targets um, with, a, with a creative message and a great message to invite people to Burke County. But, you know, it's been a challenge, but we have been able to uh, cut back and, um, reserve funds to help us through this. And we are in better shape than some small TDAs our size. There are some in North Carolina that probably, if it continues, will, will suffer tremendously because they don't have the reserves there. But like I said, it looks like April was the bottom and now we're starting to pull back out of it. Thank you, Ed. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I have the question to for Ed to, report when he anticipated reopening the visitor center, but his report was so good. He gave us the indications of what he was doing and how he was opening and what's going on in a couple of months. So he answered the question. Let, let me say this, that the early, when we opened the visitor center last week, the early visitors were almost all people looking to relocate here. So it wasn't leisure travel or tourists, it was people looking to move here. And so that's a positive sign and that, that trend continues. And we've seen that now for several, several years of folks really wanting to, to move out of the metropolitan areas and come to Burke County. Very good. Fantastic. Anything else for Ed? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion at this time to accept the report. So All right, we had a motion to accept. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, do the vote roll calls. Uh, Vice Chair Mowey? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And myself, Kay, that will be unanimous. Thank you, Ed. Great review.
Thank you. Good evening, sir. All right, moving on to item number seven for our scheduled public hearings from uh, Burke Development Inc., a building reuse grant and local economic development grant for project refresh and public hearing. And that will be presented by Alan Wood, director of BDI. Alan. Thank you, chair, uh, vice chair and commissioners, Kay and county attorney, county manager. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I would like to present project refresh this is a project that we've been working since September. I would like to uh, commend Electric Cities and Carl Reese, who actually brought us this lead from a marketing trip he made uh, to California, I think late last August. Uh, this uh, is a company that will be moving into the former Ice River Springs facility, uh, which is located uh, on Ceramic Tile Drive just down beyond the uh, where uh, VECA and what used to be the old Caterpillar facility is located. That building's about 318,000 square feet. Uh, they will, uh, the company proposes to create 151 new jobs uh, by the end of 2022. The total projection over five years is 226 jobs. Uh, they will be planning to invest approximately $18.5 million. Uh, I will say that's new investment. We won't know what the tax base is exactly until uh, such time that uh, those numbers are provided uh, by the uh, uh, tax office. So that is just an estimate of what they will invest. Uh, that number could vary greatly one way or the other, hopefully up. Uh, they do employ, uh, plan to put in two uh, state-of-the-art uh, bottling lines. Uh, the building is under contract. We uh, have submitted complete and they have been accepted applications for a one North Carolina grant uh, with Commerce and there is a building reuse grant that is on the agenda for the Rural Infrastructure Authority. Uh, that meeting will be held June the 15th. Uh, the building reuse grant is for $500,000. Uh, that's the request. If we have a 5% match required, uh, I have, I am on the schedule with Morganton to uh, present to them ju uh, June 1st. Uh, the 1NC is also for $500,000. That requires a 50% match. That match will be derived in the form of local incentives that are proposed uh, for 60% of the new tax base, that's just new tax base, for a period of five years. Uh, the county's portion, roughly $77,000 a year based on 60% of the new taxes over a five-year period would be a, a, a little over $385,000. Uh, the a city's portion uh, based on their tax rate would be about 63,000, a little over a year with a total of about $316,000. Um, we, uh, and I think that's uh, everything we have. This company has been great to work with. And during a pandemic, we're very pleased to have a project of this size and stature move forward. Thank you, Alan, for that great report. Gentlemen, any comments or questions for Alan? Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to uh, uh, say to Alan, great job for you and your staff for um, um, getting this in this difficult <clears throat> time to be able to recruit this much of an investment. And uh, you've done, you've done an exceptional job. And uh, from our earlier discussion, you had said that we're gonna be the only East Coast distribution center for this company. Well, at, at this time, we would be their East Coast Distribution Center. They have been looking for facility for quite some time, uh, probably in excess of two or three years before we were able to make this connection with them. All right, any other questions or comments, gentlemen? Mr. Chairman, uh, Alan, I, I had a question about the match <clears throat> Do I understand we're supposed to match the 500 match by 50% is, and uh, that we're given 12. 
I, my question very quickly is, if you add the incentive from the county, it's $388,225. If you add it for the city, it's $318,850. That's a grand total of $704,750. So my question is, are, are we over shooting the runway there or does that need to be tweaked? I think that uh, is in line. Actually, we've looked at it for a less number of years than some we have given. This is pretty much very much in line with other incentives we've given. On the 1NC, it has to be matched within the first three years uh, to, qual to meet the state standards. Uh, and so I think it is uh, in line with what we have done with past projects. But but is our requirement so much a year, or is it a half of five hundred thousand? I just uh, legally. What the state requires is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars required locally. It has that has to be done over the three year period. We're using this, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to match that exactly. What we, this is the standard form that we have done on local or our local incentives in the past. It just so happens we're able to use this as match and not have to come up with funds from another source. We're using funds that the company is actually deriving, so we're, or in, uh, is uh, providing based on new investment rather than have to come up with this money uh, from a uh, general fund or other, or other facilities. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Is anybody signed in by zoom uh, to speak at a public hearing? Um, I have not received any um, written comments. For, from citizens to speak, and um, I'm, I am not aware of um, anyone wanting to speak that has signed on to the meeting. Okay, so at this time we'll um, announce the public hearing, and I'm going to announce that written comments will be accepted through May the 20th of 2020 via email, by fax, by U.S. mail, or hand delivered to the clerk to comply with House Bill 704. And at this time- Mr. Cameron? Yes, ma'am. I, I apologize for, for interrupting. I need to make a technical correction. Um, if you look at the um, page 140 of agenda packet, that has the public hearing notice. Mm -hmm. And to give folks a full 24 hours, um, I included that they have till May 21st at 8 a.m. to submit um, any comments on the proposed incentive grant. All right, gentlemen, I'm gonna change that announcement that written comments will be accepted through May the 21st via email, fax, US mail, or hand delivered to the clerk to comply with House Bill 704. With that said, I'll entertain a motion to move this matter to May the 22nd, 2020 at our 2 p.m. meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, we got Commissioner Abley's motion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I, I think before I do that, I would ask if there is anyone uh, who is a uh, part of this Zoom who wishes to make a public comment. And if there is no one, then uh, close your public hearing first. Well, I thought I did that when I asked Kay if there was anybody on Zoom, but I will jump back. Is there anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? All right. I don't hear anyone. Does anybody else hear anyone on Zoom? All right, Mr. County Attorney, have I satisfied that? Uh, yes, sir, you have. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I have a motion in front of us by Commissioner Abley. I will now do the uh, Vote roll call. Vice Chairman Mulvey. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, th uh, I think we need to close the public hearing. I think I saw JR. Right. Before we vote. Right. I'm okay. not going to close it because it's open for written statements, isn't it, JR? It is, but you can close the public hearing portion of it. 
Is it not public if you're still waiting for hand deliveries, et cetera? Just to clarify. Um, no, what you have said is that you will accept comments. Uh, All right. That's good. All right. Let me back up. Commissioner Abley, hold your motion for just a moment, okay? I'm going to Bye. back up and close the public hearing. And we will still take comments through mail, fax, U.S. mail. Okay. Commissioner Abley, will you just make your motion again, sir? Again, yes. All right. Now we'll do, Jr. am I okay now? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> now we'll do a vote, vote <laughs> roll call. Vice Chair Mulway? Yes, sir. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Correct. And myself, and with the motion, that will be unanimous, okay? Okay. All right. Now that I got that one fixed. Moving to informal public comments. Kay, has anybody signed up for that? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a number of speakers. And uh, let me wet my whistle. Okay. Um, the first um, public comments I have is from Reason, that's the um, stay and neuter nonprofit, and it reads, uh, it was received May 15th, and it says, Dear Burke County Commissioners, on behalf of Reason, Inc., I'm writing to acknowledge our organization's support for the creation of positions as animal services enforcement officers and the transfer of oversight and supervision to the county manager. Reason has worked diligently to educate the public on benefits of spaying and neutering. Several years ago, we joined forces with Burke County with the purpose of targeting citizens who were turning in litters and had complaints filed against them for their animals problem behaviors. We enlisted the assistance of the Sheriff's Office to ensure the animal control officers distribute our reason cards as they encounter them in the field. To remind you, these cards should have been given to these citizens, which would have provided a free rabies vaccination and a free spay neuter for their animal. Unfortunately, very few cards were given out in the field. Educating in the field has been found to be a critical element to reducing the number of unwanted animals in a given area and is the current model of animal welfare programs. To achieve this, we need a model that is current and designed to educate the public on how to better care for their animals. We need officers who provide information on resources available in our community who are also willing to hold pet owners accountable by enforcing the ordinance. As you are aware, human, humane trapping is an area that requires great attention. We need animal welfare officers who believe in staying current on techniques for humane trapping and who work in harmony with organizations whose mission is to rescue, adopt, and who understand the importance of spaying and neutering. The sheriff has stated publicly many times the officers do not have time, nor do they have the manpower to do this. Key elements within the job description of one proposed position sums it up. Participating in public education, educating the public on the importance of spay, neuter, and pet overpopulation, working in cooperation with rescue organizations, and maintaining communication with animal services. All of these have been sorely lacking in the last many years. Creating these positions and aligning them with the shelter or operations is a physically responsible decision. Ultimately, having staff who are educating the public on animal ordinance and enforcing this ordinance will result in fewer animals impounded, eventually saving the taxpayers money. We may not be able to change everyone's attitudes towards the care of animals, but we can change the outcome. What a huge impact you can make if you move ahead on this decision. It is past time for Burke County. Respectfully submitted, Debbie Hawkins, President, Reason Incorporated. The next public comments is from the Burke County Animal Advisory Board, and it's to the Burke County Commissioners. This letter is in support of the proposed creation of animal services enforcement positions to be under the un oversight of the Burke County Manager. The Burke County Animal Advisory Board believes the shift 
out from under the sheriff's office would be a positive move in that it puts the animal services shelter and the enforcement of animal welfare in our community under one roof. Since the animal services staff began late last year, there has been a major shift in developing a more positive atmosphere for the animals as well as the public. Shifting the message of control to one of enforcement sets the stage for a more proactive approach for Burke County's treatment of animals. These positions, by being part of the Animal Services Center, can play a more active role in resolving issues in the community and providing resources to companion pet owners. Yes, these positions would still be responsible for enforcing the animal welfare ordinance, investigating allegations of abuse and mistreatment, but could be instrumental in providing information to the public about how to properly care for their animals and to provide rescue resources to those who find themselves unable to do so. We understand Commissioner Taylor's reluctance to reward negative behavior by not holding the Sheriff's Department accountable for what they are assigned to do. However, rewarding negative behavior is allowing the behavior to continue with little accountability. The County Commissioners, in reality, have no legal authority over the Sheriff's Office or its staff. If Burke County's government truly wants to make a difference in the lives of animals in our county, creating these positions and putting them under the authority of the county manager is a step in the right direction. With respect, Debbie Hawkins Chair, Burke County Animal Advisory Board. Next, we've received a comment from Jennifer Terry of Morganton, and she writes, Dear Commissioners, I'm writing in support of the proposal to move animal control positions from supervision by the Sheriff's Department to supervision by the County Manager. Because of the unique overlap of animal welfare, code enforcement, and public health considerations, I feel strongly the County Manager is best positioned to address these areas in a humane and synergistic manner. The Burke County Commissioners have made significant progress in addressing the needs of our domesticated animals in recent years. I believe this progress will continue with the approval of this proposal. Next, we will hear from Patty Selm of Morganton. Dear Commissioners, I am writing to express my support to create animal services enforcement positions under the supervision of the County Manager. While currently those positions are under the supervision of the Sheriff's Department, I feel it is imperative to note the progress that has been made in animal welfare in our county since the county manager, Ryan Steen, has taken over the supervision of our Animal Services Department. There have been many gains toward the positive treatment and management of domesticated animals under the direction of Mr. Steen. It seems very logical to extend that to animal control or animal enforcement and care in the field. Animal services and animal enforcement or control must work hand in hand with mutual respect and towards the same goal. Therefore, putting this department or area of animal, animal care under the direction of the county manager would seem the best way to achieve that goal. Thank you for all your er efforts to help the animals in Burke County and all the fantastic progress that has trans transpired to this point. Sincerely, Patty Sam. Next, this is from Gwen Hood of uh, Morganton, and she writes, Dear Commissioners, County Manager Steen, I am writing this letter to support the efforts of this board to form a new animal control and positions which will be under the supervision of the County Manager's Office and will no, no longer function under the supervision of the Sheriff's Department as Sheriff Wisnett has proposed and supports. The positive changes which have already taken place with the formation of our Burke County Animal Services Center would be enhanced and greatly benefit the Burke County Animal Services Center with the addition of a new animal control. Both departments would work more cohesively and towards the same goals if animal control were supervised by the county manager's office. Part of the negative image that still unfortunately impacts the Burke County Animal Services Center is the knowledge that there has been no change or no improvement in animal control policies and goals. Both departments working together under the same team would have a more compassionate approach to solving problems in our county. 
Instead of negatively impacting the efforts of the Burke County Animal Services Center, a new animal control would instead help promote a positive, humane team and further our cause and hope to become a no-kill county. The public's confidence would also improve regarding animal control and there would be more opportunities to work with the public in educating and resolving existing concerns for animal welfare in our county. I hope you will unanimously approve this exciting and positive change. Sincerely, Gwen Hood. Next, we, we um, hear from Evelyn McMillan Alderson, treasurer of Hearts and Hands for Animals in Morganton. And she writes, Dear Commissioners, I am writing to you this evening to ask that you approve the creation and appointment of new animal services officers under the direction of the county manager, Brian Steen. I believe this will allow him to continue the incredible advance, advancements that have been made with animal services in such a short time under his direction. The inclusiveness and community outreach set in motion by animal services staff has made an enormous difference in public opinion and the lives of the companion animals in Burke County. My organization provides monetary assistance to families and individuals needing veterinary care, spaying, neutering, and rental deposits, enabling them to keep their pet and avoid rehoming or surrender to animal services. We often partner with rescues, low cost spay neuter, and gratefully now animal services if they find someone in need. I believe your continued support and direction of animal services will serve to reinforce the All About Advancing brand for Burke County. Warmest regards, Evelyn McMillan Alderson. Next, Leela Duke writes, Dear Burke County Commissioners, I'm writing this to state that I'm very much in support of the creation of the positions for animal services enforcement officer and the transfer of these positions to the county manager's office. As an individual who has volunteered with animal services of Burke County and someone who has been involved with several organizations dealing with animal welfare, I would like to first express my sincere appreciation to the board for the original restructuring of animal control to our current animal services program and its placement under the county manager's office. This has made a tremendous impact already on the treatment and welfare of the animals and brought Burke County far forward in its quest to have an innovative quality program in place that would be a model and uh, would, it be, pardon me, would be a model to be emulated. Like the missing piece of a jigsaw puzzle, adding these positions and placing them under the supervision of the county manager's office will serve to ultimately complete the picture in making Burke County's animal services programs reach the goal you yourselves have set forth. That goal is for animal services to be a department that understands and emphasizes the need for community education regarding basic animal welfare, the benefits and the need for spaying and neutering of animals, a desire to work in coordination with other agencies to enhance the quality of life of animals in our county, and a knowledge of best practices in handling of or trapping of stray or abandoned animals, which has not always been the case in the past. But this is the time to move forward. This is the time to build on the progress that has been made thus far. Your decision in this matter can make this happen and will greatly impact the lives of animals in Burke County, the people who provide upkeep and care for them, and ultimately all of its citizens. I urge you to build on what you've begun by approving this, and I extend a sincere thank you for all that you do. Respectfully submitted, Leela Duke. And last, we have a letter from Gwen Stevens of Rutherford College, and Gwen writes, this note is in support of creating new animal service enforcement positions under the overseeing of Burke County Manager Brian Steen. I believe if we could move forward with this plan in mind, several things would take place. First, it would bring the current animal services and animal control under one roof, working as one entity. This would give full transparency to all activities taking place, whereas with the present Burke County Sheriff's Office, things are not very clear and mandates are not being upheld. We are seeing incidents of present animal control not willing to work with the current Burke County Animal Services. At the present, it seems that the county has no say-so over what happens with the Burke County Sheriff's animal control. 
it is my belief that a house divided will fail and so far that has been the outcome with this current situation. The animal house within Burke County is failing for a number of reasons and many of them have been spoken loudly by the advocacy groups and the animal board since 2017. It is time to get our house in order as one and maintain an excellent rapport with our public and most of all treating the animals as they should be treated humanely. Second, subcommittees of the Animal Advisory Board have tried to bring about a great positive image by keeping the public aware via radio and TV ads, but maintaining a positive image is difficult when we encounter adverse situations that no one has control over except the Burke County Sheriff's Office. I am speaking of the most recent issue that occurred with a small dog death at the hands of Burke County um, Sheriff's Office Animal Control. We are working hard to change the image that has been emitted from the former animal control shelter. However, when you go to the sheriff for assistance and none is given except saying that he, the sheriff, wants to get rid of animal control, that speaks volumes to me. If they don't want to do it, then please give it to someone who does. If we move forward with this transition, we will see the public more willing to become involved with their time, talents, and resources, all of which we desperately need. Finally, if we can move forward with this new enforcement, not control, the house no longer divided will work more cohesively and transparently. We will see great strides in organization and in operations. I understand there has been reluctance to move forward because it felt the Burke County Sheriff's Office would be rewarded in their failure to accurately and adequately perform their duties regarding the animals. However, I see this not as a reward, but putting this major responsibility into the hands of those most capable, most responsible, and most willing to put their hands to the plow and work this job as it should be. Thank you for your kind consideration regarding this most difficult decision, Wynn Stevens. And that is all the comments that I have received, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate that. Moving to our consent agenda, which is item number nine, I'm going to ask our county manager, Brian Steen, at this time to review the items on the consent agenda. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You have 10 items. First is Burke County Public Services presentation of financial data for the period ending uh, March 31st, 2020. I mean, that was Burke County Public Schools, I'm sorry. Uh, number two, BOC resolution regarding rules of procedure for electronic meetings during COVID-19 state of emergency. Item three, clerk appointment to planning board, which was a new item. Item four, clerk Eastburg Senior Center Advisory Committee reappointments removal. Item five, finance audit contract for fiscal 19-20. Item six, JCPC approval of county plan for Burke County and funding allocation. Item four, PBHM uh, amended bylaws. Item eight, tax department tax collection report for April 2020. Item nine, tax department release refund report for April 2020. And item 10, Western Piedmont Community College presentation of financial data for the period ending March 31st, 2020. That concludes your consent items, sir. Thank you, Brian. This time I'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I will be voting no to this item. Uh, we had 11 items that was voted on to be on the consent agenda. You only have 10. Uh, the one that was left was the finance report, third quarter report from your finance officer. So I will be voting no. Thank you, sir. Motion to approve. So moved, Mr. Chair. All right, you heard that motion. I'll, I'll do a vote, call, a vote a roll call. Vice Chairman Moy. Yes. Commissioner Abley. Yes. Commissioner Britton. Yes. Commissioner Taylor. No. And Commissioner Carlson will be yes. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving on to item number 10 is item for decision. Our first item for decision tonight will be presented by Brian Steen County Manager, which will be the 
interpretation of the recommended budget for a uh, fiscal year 2021. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, I have developed a recommended budget for you. Of course, uh, it is balanced and uh, it's the recommended budget for 2020-21 that meets the immediate and long-term needs of the county and supports the goals desired by the board. I respectfully remind you that a mandatory public hearing for the recommended budget uh, has been scheduled for 6 p.m. on Tuesday, June the 16th. Um, to go into it a little more, you're all aware of the COVID-19 pandemic and there's influence on the anticipated revenues and expenditures. In order to continue the current service level for citizens provided for capital and operational needs, a continuation of the current 69.5 cent tax rate is proposed in the recommended budget. I uh, do wanna share with you that uh, we find ourselves in financial and economic environment like no other in the past 100 years due to the COVID-19. As a result of the prevailing economic uncertainty, we are guided by caution related to revenue projections and my recommendations for immediate expenditures. These expenditures must be made in order to provide primary core services to our citizens while awaiting development of economic information that is clearly credible. Um, with that information in hand, we can move forward with considering the possibility of making mid-year review of budget funds available if we desire to fulfill certain optional but important expenditure decisions. And these relate to things such as that for the Burke County Public School System, the community college, and a 1% cost of living increase if the board finds that the revenues and the financial trends are such that um, the board feels comfortable uh, voting to approve those things. Again, uh, this will be in your electronic copy, will be in your um, electronic box, and to contact Lance if you would like him to deliver a hard copy of the budget to you. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll let you move on with this. Thank you, Brian, for that presentation. So at this time, we'll need a motion to acknowledge the receipt of the manager's recommended budget and to schedule a public hearing. So move, Mr. Chairman. All right, you've heard Wayne's motion to acknowledge the receipt of the manager's recommended budget for 2021 and to schedule a public hearing for Tuesday. June the 16th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as persons may be whole. I will now do a vote roll call. Vice Chair Mulway? Yes. Mr. Abley? Yes. Mr. Britton? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Chairman, yes, but did we get a total budget number yet? Was that part of his presentation and I just missed it? Brian, you want to answer that? It's in the budget message, but the total recommended budget is 109436985 which is uh, $5,419,910 less than the uh, totals requested by departments and outside entities. How much is that over the last budget? Seven thousand, seven million. I mean, I'd have to go back and look at that, sir. I'm sorry. It's all right. Yes, Mr. Chairman. All right, and the chairman votes yes. Okay, that is unanimous on that one. Okay. Moving on to item number two is the coronavirus relief fund direct county allocation. That's going to be presented by Brian Steen, County Manager. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, you may be aware that the state legislature has recently taken uh, steps to enable counties to receive funds uh, called the Coronavirus Relief Fund Allocation. For Burke County, that's $1,722,221. Um, we've just received this, and I apologize for the short notice, but we're needing to act. I have to provide a, a plan to the state by June 1st. Um, so I'm asking the board to take action to receive the monies and allow me the authority and the capability and the 
ability to establish a process by which any interested cities in Burke County could also ask for us to uh, provide funds to them if there are funds available. Uh, thank you, Brian. Any questions or concerns for Brian? Mr. Chairman, I am just assuming that we will, before it dispersing that money, we'll get a plan of what we're going to do with it, get a goal, and uh, I understand that we, it will be up to us to also disperse some of it to the cities. Is that correct? That is correct, and Brian has to have that report in by June the 1st to the state of how we're going to do that, and he has not finished that report as of yet. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. If not, I will entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. All right. That's a long motion, Scott. How about reading all that out since there's so much money involved here for me, if you would? Well, I can't read it on my screen. Okay. <laughs> um, so I can all right. do it, Mr. Chairman. The vice, the vice Chair, may, you want to do it, Jeff? I'll be glad to. Okay. Uh, to accept the coronavirus relief fund allocation of a million seven twenty two two hundred twenty one to authorize the county manager to establish the process and procedures a municipality located in Burke County must follow if they wish to participate and have their requests for coronavirus relief grant funds considered by the county manager in accordance with coronavirus grant guidelines and availability of grant funds. To authorize the county manager to execute coronavirus relief allocation agreements with participating municipalities in Burke County. And that all right. Good. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Do the vote roll call now. Um, Chair Mulway? Yes. Commissioner Avery? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And I will vote yes also. That'll be unanimous, Kay. Thank you so very much. All right, moving on to item number three for decision is from HR, Human Resources, the creation of animal service enforcement positions, and that will be presented by Rhonda Lee, a HR director. Rhonda? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. Um, upon the request of Sheriff Steve Wisnett that the responsibility of Burke County Animal Control be placed under the county manager's office, we are requesting that three new full-time positions be created uh, these positions will include one animal services enforcement supervisor and two animal services enforcement officers. The actual cost of these positions are included in the county manager's recommended fiscal year 2021 recommended budget. Um, and to ensure a smooth transition from the sheriff's office to the animal services department, it is requested that these positions be approved uh, today so that we can advertise and recruit for the uh, candidates so they can begin employment on July 1, 2020. Um, the cost of these positions is also outlined in the county manager's recommended budget. I'll be glad to take any questions. All right, thank you, Rhonda. Questions or comments for Rhonda? Yes, I, t I take it. Uh, Johnny, that the uh, people that are in those positions now will go back to the sheriff's department? If they, they may or they may not. They, if he has room for them over there in some kind well, isn't of... He sh isn't he short, like, I, I forget how many positions in the sheriff's department? He, I don't know what he is short today as far as road officers. He could be short road officers, but he has definitely short positions inside the jail. Right. Mr. Chairman, um, I appreciate the letters, emails that I received in support of this, uh, of changing it. But I also have a couple of questions that uh, a couple have called and I have obviously are not too pleased with the move. Uh, and most of it has to do with finances. It has nothing to do with uh, Brian or, or anything, but the question they said for me to ask the rest of you gentlemen is this, why would you take the highest paid person in the county and put him over animal control? 
I think it's a good question. Why would we, how much, and I'd like to ask and meant to call Kay and I just didn't get time. I was covered up yesterday and today. But Kay, if we asked you a question, how many hours have you spent in the last year dealing with animal control? A lot. How much? A lot. You want to do that the rest of your life? Well, I'm an animal lover. <laughs> I'm happy to help. Well, one of the things I wanted, and, and obviously I am not going to get, somehow or another, we don't want to think about three past three months here except budget time, and then we think a year at a time. But, you know, how much time is actually going to be required of our county manager to head up the animal shelter? I would like to know. And I would like to know the total cost of what it's going to cost uh, for us to operate that animal control outside the sheriff's office and jurisdiction. Um, we should do better I I as a, a different entity if we're going to spend twice the money. My gosh, you, you invested twice as much. It should be better. So I... Uh, Again, it's one of those things that there's not enough information to make a real smart, wise decision about that animal control. And I don't think that I would be willing to vote to put the highest paid employee in Burke County government in charge of animal control. It's a, it's a theory hang up folks and i don't mind admitting it um, um i think it, I, I think brian is much more uh, valuable to us as a full-time manager for burke county than he is part-time animal overseer and i'll shut up thank you any other questions or comments uh, Mr. Chairman, I might just ask uh, uh, Mr. Manager, you may want to answer this or uh, or Rhonda. Uh, I don't think there's any intent for Brian to, to manage day-to-day -day operations here. This this will be uh, just under the, the county umbrella rather than under the sheriff's office umbrella. Uh, what would be the chain of command that will, will, will this position fall under one of our other department heads, or uh, uh, I know we're having a, uh, the proposal is for an enforcement supervisor. Uh, who would that supervisor answer to? Uh, just give us kind of a, a chain of authority here, if you don't mind. Ron, would you like for me to answer that? Supervisor answer to. Before you do that, Rhonda, Jeff, you've <laughs> asked the question I have asked before. Thank you. For me to answer that. Before you do that, Rhonda, Jeff, you've asked the question I have asked before. Thank you. I'm hearing some feedback, but um, basically the chain of command would be for the, uh, the supervisor position to report to Caitlin, the animal services director, and then the other officer position would report to the supervisor. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, did I hear her correct that you have a supervisor position and they would answer to Caitlin? Yes, that's what she said. They would answer to Caitlin and the two officers would answer to the supervisor. So a total of four, four individuals. No, three. three. You said two officers? Two, two officers three. and a supervisor, two and one is three, I count. And Caitlin? Caitlin is a pre existing uh, position. She is the director of the Animal Services Center. So these would be her subordinate and his two line level officers. Uh, Caitlin currently reports to me now.
And are we going, Mr. Chairman, excuse me? Go ahead. Uh, are we gonna expect four people to do the job that six, 10 sheriff department individuals as needed could do? And, you know, that's the, th the theory behind this. Uh, I, I know people are so unhappy, they just won't change and they don't care what it is, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I just won't change. I want it fixed. And uh, this is, I'm sorry, I am convinced this is not fixing it. Thank you for those comments, duly noted. Any other comments? Any other questions? All right, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the creation of one animal services enforcement supervisor and two animal services enforcement officer positions and to authorize the Burke County Human Resource Department to begin advertising and recruiting for these positions so the selected candidates can begin employment with the county on July 1, 2020. All right, gentlemen, you've heard Jeff's motion. Uh, vote roll call. Vice Chair Mulvey? Yes. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Abley? Yes. Mr. Britton? Yes. Mr. Taylor? No. Oh. And the chair votes yes. I'd be four to one, Madam Clerk. Okay. Thank you so very much. Now we'll move to item number 11, reports and comments uh, from everyone tonight. Let's start off with the county attorney, JR. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, since the last meeting of uh, commissioners on April 21st, um, I have uh, reviewed and negotiated a contract with uh, Equinox Con Consult and Design, uh, along with Shane Prisby for design services in connection with the Jonas Ridge Convenience Center. I've received and negotiated a staffing agreement with Blue Ridge Healthcare Hospitals to provide emergency staffing support with uh, Burke County Emergency Management and the Unified man. I've worked with the Register of Deeds concerning a potential fraud matter coming before that office. I have uh, researched and uh, uh, issued an opinion to uh, Sheriff Wisnett uh, concerning the use of tablet computers in the jail. I have consulted with uh, the chairman and the clerk uh, regarding changes to the county state of emergency that allowed uh, private short-term rentals to reopen. I'm presently working with the county manager on the contract to allow municipalities uh, to uh, participate and receive funds under the 2020 COVID-19 Recovery Act, uh, which is what we discussed tonight under uh, decision item three. I'm presently working with the finance director for a written memorandum of understanding with REACT to manage our emergency facilities at NCSD. I'm presently working with Alan Wood and Hope Hopkins to uh, complete the grant agreements for Project Refresh that we uh, had the public hearing on tonight, should the board approve this grant at their meeting on uh, May 22nd. And I'm also presently working with uh, Blue Ridge Healthcare. Um, they are refinancing their debt, which would require approval um, of the county commission. So we're working to get that before the commission. And that's, uh, that's my report. Mr. Chairman, if you did not hear JR, he said that finishes his report. He's not hearing. Johnny, you need to unmute. Yeah, it's muted.
There we go. I'm back now. Thank you, JR. Appreciate that report. I'm sorry, folks. I lost my mouse here and I couldn't get myself unmuted. All right, let's move over to Commissioner Abley. Your report, sir? Done. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Britton. Uh, no comments, sir. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Taylor. Mr. Chairman, uh, the only thing in addition to our regular meetings, which is in your packet, I attended a statewide uh, by Zoom uh, a two hour agricultural and other committees meeting on 513. And the other thing I would like from uh, JR, I need an update on the Alpine issue. Uh, did that get resolved? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. All right, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to compliment our clerk to the board and the assistant to the county manager for their efforts in the past two meetings to get the number of minutes that they've gotten out for your review and approval and our, our staff that are working with emergency management. Uh, this has been a long drawn out battle and they're, they're a little weary, but they're still getting the job done. And I just want to thank them um, for what they're doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brian. All right, gentlemen, let me remind you of a couple uh, dates to remember. Tomorrow is County Assembly Day for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. That will start at 9.30 in the morning and run until about noon. Um, so we're not gonna be able to get to Raleigh, so we're gonna do that virtually through Zoom. I hope all of you received an invitation. If you hadn't, get with me or Kay, and we'll make sure that you get the uh, passwords and everything you get in for that meeting. Uh, we'll have a virtual special meeting, meeting on May the 22nd at two o'clock p.m. Well, uh, just as a reminder, the county offices are going to be a closed in observance on Memorial Day. We will also have scheduled a virtual special budget meeting on May the 28th at 2 p.m. Our pre-agenda meeting will be June the 2nd, 2020 at 3 o'clock p.m. Hopefully, we will be back at the boardroom in June. I'm, that's what I'm hoping will happen. Uh, and then again, a budget meeting for June the 4th, 2020 at 2 p.m. if needed. I would encourage you all to listen to the governor this week. He will be making announcements. Um, I don't know what time, but it is supposed to be Friday, uh, the 22nd, regarding phase two of his stay at home orders. So please listen to that and hopefully we can come back to some kind of normalcy through those uh, announcements. Um, I did attend uh, two meetings at Western Youth Institution. There is a, 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 a planned uh, proposal, <coughs> pardon me, to implode Western Youth Institution. <coughs> that uh, <coughs> exact date has not been determined. As soon as I find that out, I will let you know. <coughs> pardon me again. And also, we met several Zoom meetings with the Opioid Settlement Work Group. We're anticipating <coughs> a settlement soon on that one. For other announcements, uh, please remember Burke Countyans, don't litter on the highways. Please pick up your trash. Let's keep Burke County clean. Please remember to spay or uh, neuter your pets. Uh, we're not doing, again, great on the census 2020, so I'd like to remind everybody that is watching on Zoom and through uh, our website and through Facebook, please, please, please complete the 2020 census. Uh, find a friend forever at the Burke County Animal Services Center. And with that, I will turn it over to Kay for our vacancy announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, we have the following opportunities for citizens to get involved in county boards and committees, the Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee, Council on Aging, Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, City of Morganton Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ areas, the Voluntary Agriculture Board, the Burke County Board of Adjustment and Planning Board, the Western Piedmont Regional Transit Authority Transportation Advisory Board, Partners Behavioral Health Management, Burke Senior Center Advisory Council, the Recreation Commission, and the Western Piedmont Community College Board of Trustees. And that concludes my report. 
Okay, thank you so very much. Gentlemen, I do not see a need for a closed session meeting tonight. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, we'll do a roll call. Vice Chair Mulwee? Yes. Commissioner Abley? Yes. Commissioner Britton? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. And myself will be yes. Thank you so very, very much. Hopefully this may be our last meeting by Zoom. I hope so. All right, have a good evening, you gentlemen. Y'all too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.